In a distant galaxy, the movie unfolds on the mysterious planet of Barsoom, a world divided into three powerful kingdoms, Helium, Zodanga, and the Sharks. For centuries, the Helium and Zodanga kingdoms have been locked in relentless warfare, their armies distinguished by blue and red capes respectively. At the heart of this interstellar conflict, General Sab then of Zodanga encounters three enigmatic messengers of God known as the Therns, led by Matai Shang. In a cryptic exchange, Shang bestows upon Sab then a mysterious blue weapon, a divine gift from the goddess herself. The Therns, possessors of the elusive Ninth Ray, a mystical blue light granting them unparalleled strength on Barsoom, pledge their support to Zodanga's cause in the war. The scene shifts to bustling 1881 New York City. Edgar responds to an urgent summons from his wealthy uncle, John Carter, at the train station. John's loyal butler escorts him to John's lavish estate. To Edgar's shock, he learns of John's untimely death and the substantial inheritance left behind. The eerie twist comes as he's led to John's mausoleum, where John's body rests. Strangely, the mausoleum's door can only be opened from the inside. Here, in this solemn atmosphere, Edgar receives John's diary, intended exclusively for his eyes. Edgar uncovers a profound connection with his late uncle as he reads the diary. The story is set after the American Civil War in the Arizona desert. John Carter, a former Confederate captain, abandons his past to seek gold deep within the earth. His peaceful life is disrupted when Union Colonel Powell abducts him, aiming to enlist him in the U.S. Cavalry. John's unwavering refusal to return to military life sets off a chain of events. After multiple daring escape attempts, he finally breaks free, overpowering a guard and taking the colonel's horse. A relentless pursuit follows, with Powell and his soldiers chasing John. Fate has more in store as they encounter a formidable mounted Apache warband nearby. Amidst the chaos of the shootout, the colonel and his men engage in a fierce battle with the locals. John, desperate to escape the mayhem, attempts to flee. However, when the colonel is gravely injured in the firefight, a surge of compassion compels John to come to his aid. He assists the wounded colonel and guides him towards an unfamiliar cave, a place unexplored in John's quest for gold. Venturing into the cave, John ignites a match, revealing a staggering sight. The cave's ceiling is adorned with a dazzling abundance of embedded gold. Yet, his astonishment is short-lived as a mysterious figure materializes behind him. It is one of the therns, previously encountered at the outset of the movie. The injured colonel alerts John, who finds himself embroiled in a fierce confrontation with the enigmatic stranger. In the ensuing struggle, John manages to shoot the man, causing him to collapse to the ground. Kneeling beside the fallen thern, John hears the cryptic word, Barsoom, escape the man's lips as he gazes upon a peculiar medallion clutched in his hand. Curiosity piqued, John picks up the medallion and repeats the word, Barsoom. In an instant, a brilliant blue light emanates from the locket. When John reopens his eyes, he finds himself in an unfamiliar desert landscape. As he attempts to stand and walk, he discovers that the rules of gravity seem to have changed, allowing him to float midair. Confusion sets in as he tries to adapt to his new environment, stumbling and levitating with each step. His journey leads him to a nearby hill where he witnesses the hatching of several eggs. Suddenly, a formidable group of green, six-limbed creatures riding massive beasts emerges. Their leader launches an attack on John, propelling him into a remarkable leap. The others cease fire at the leader's command. Speaking in a foreign tongue, the creature introduces himself as Tush Tarkas, while John mistakenly presents himself as John Carter from Virginia, which the creatures misconstrue as Virginia. Tarkas encourages John to replicate his earlier leap, but John resists, leading to another clash. The Tharks eventually overpower John, leaving him as their captive. Through their conversation, we learn that these peculiar beings are known as Tharks. Meanwhile, on the same enigmatic planet, in the city of Helium, Princess Deja practices showcasing a weapon she has designed for her father, the King of Helium. Helium finds itself embroiled in an ongoing war with the city of Zodanga, with the Therns siding with the latter, tipping the balance of power in Zodanga's favor. In the political intrigue of Barsoom, Princess Deja unveils a critical secret. Zodanga's use of the Ninth Ray, a mysterious force fueling their war efforts. When she presents her groundbreaking weapon to the king, a covert saboteur causes it to malfunction, leading to a disastrous explosion. Sab then, king of Zodanga, aims to marry Deja to end the war and secure his rule over Barsoom. Deja vehemently opposes, understanding the dire consequences, as Sab then would become the Prince of Helium, ruling the planet. Meanwhile, the Tharks bring John into their city, placing him among newborns. 
A female Thark named Sola gives him a mysterious liquid at night, granting him the ability to understand their language. The next day, the Tharks challenge John to a high jump before their assembly. John realizes that the medallion, now with Tarkas, is his key home, without which escape seems impossible. Unexpectedly, two battleships from Helium and Zodanga appear in the sky, locked in fierce aerial combat. The Tharks eagerly bet on the outcome, seeing the war as entertainment. Princess Deja is among the combatants, struggling with her ship, leading to her falling. John uses his newfound jumping ability to rescue her, earning the Tharks admiration. The Tharks rally behind John and Deja, and they engage in combat against Zodanga's soldiers. John's strategic skills change the bottle's course, securing victory for Helium, but their ship crashes. Now stranded with the Tharks, John's abilities catch Tarkas's attention, who appoints him as his right-hand man. Initially hesitant, John eventually accepts the role. Under the cover of night, Deja and John engage in a revealing conversation. Deja discloses that they are on Mars, known as Barsoom in their native tongue. John, however, finds this revelation difficult to believe, asserting his earthly origin. Deja is equally incredulous. She attributes John's exceptional strength and leaping abilities to his denser bone structure, accentuated by the planet's low gravity. Deja then guides John to the Forbidden Thark Temple, where humans are typically forbidden. She hopes that the temple holds answers about interworld travel, the very phenomenon that brought John to this alien land, and might provide a path for his return home. Deja, John, and compassionate Thark, Sola, venture deeper into a forbidden temple, catching the Thark authorities' attention. Sola pleads for mercy, but their fate darkens. Deja deciphers enigmatic inscriptions on a goddess Issa's statue before they are captured by the Tharks, facing death for sacrilege. Tarkas, their captor, unveils a surprising revelation to save them. He reveals he's Sola's father, sparing them from Thark punishment. Tarkas entrusts John with his medallion, urging him to journey to the river Is along with Sola, discover the goddess Isis's secrets, and find a way home. Their subterfuge unravels when the Tharks return, and Tal Hages takes charge. John, Deja, and Sola escape, aiming for the river Is. However, Deja redirects them to Helium, intending to recruit John as a soldier in the ongoing war. Disappointed, John leaves her behind, urging Sola to lead their way. Deja, desperate to avoid marrying Sab then, implores John to reconsider. He suggests an alternative journey to the river, and though reluctant, she agrees. They embark on a perilous voyage along the Is River, reaching a colossal inverted pyramid. At its peak, they discover a strange blue energy emanating from the ground, linked to the powerful Ninth Ray Deja once used as a weapon. They also ponder the possibility of John's arrival on Mars, possibly a transmission of his earthly self via the Ninth Ray. Within the delicate tapestry of life, the enchanting narrative unfolds as John and Deja discover the profound allure of love, their hearts intertwining in a harmonious dance of emotions. Amidst the looming threat of the Warhoon army, John exhibits incredible valor by instructing Deja and Sola to flee, opting to confront the formidable Warhoons single-handedly. Fortunately, the King of Helium dispatches his forces to aid John, enabling them to triumph over the Warhoon assailants and rescue him. With John injured, they transport him to the city of Helium. Deja encounters Sab then, the King of Zodanga, who proposes marriage as a way to end the war. With limited options, Deja reluctantly agrees, leading to a complex turn of events. In another scene, John recovers in the Helium Palace. A soldier, acting on Deja's behalf, guides him to her chamber. Deja pleads with John to use the medallion to return home. As guards enter her chamber, John mysteriously disappears. Deja believes he's gone to Earth, unaware that he's hiding, eluding the soldier's search. His refuge is brief, ensnared by Matai Shang's shape-shifting abilities. Meanwhile, preparations for Deja's wedding to Sab then buzz in the city. Matai Shang uses advanced Ninth Ray technology to immobilize John, manipulating him through a wrist device and holding him captive. Matai Shang unveils Sab Than's sinister plot to assassinate Deja and take over Helium after their wedding. The Therns allied with Sab then due to his manipulability, but Matai Shang's true aim was to expand his influence across all of Barsoom through Sab Than's rule. Matai Shang is about to eliminate John when an alien dog, John's earlier friend, intervenes. With a bold bite, the dog severs Matai Shang's wrist device, freeing John. Swiftly, John seizes control of a flying craft, determined to stop Deja from marrying Sab Than. Despite his determination, John struggles to master the aircraft, 
leading to a crash landing perilously close to the Tharks' domain. Here, he and the battered Tharkas are captured by the Tharks, now under the rule of Tal Hages. The ruthless Thark leader imprisons John and Tharkas alongside formidable creatures known as the White Apes, intending to subject them to a cruel fate. With remarkable bravery, John defeats the White Apes, earning the admiration of the Thark community. He challenges Tal Hages to single combat and triumphs, winning the Tharks' allegiance. United, John convinces them to confront Zodanga, forging a potent alliance. As Deja and Sab Than's wedding begins, John arrives just in time to stop it. Sab then tries to harm Deja, but John intervenes, sparking a fierce battle between the two cities, with the Tharks siding with Helium. Eventually, Zodanga falls, but Matai Shang escapes with John's medallion. Now resolved to remain on Mars as Deja's husband, John relinquishes the pursuit of his medallion. A joyous wedding ceremony celebrates their union, with John ascending to the title of Prince of Helium. The next morning, on a balcony, John and Deja share their love when a shocking twist occurs. Deja steps away briefly, and suddenly, Matai Shang appears. Despite John's brave resistance, Matai Shang uses a medallion to send John back to Earth. John awakens in a dusty cave, disoriented and with a long beard, finding Colonel Powell's remains nearby. It hints at a significant passage of time on Earth during his Mars adventure, concluding his extraordinary journey mysteriously. Deep in a cave, John Carter searches relentlessly for the elusive medallion, his only ticket back to Mars. Sadly, it eludes him, leaving him stranded on Earth. Still, the cave's embedded gold offers him great wealth, a means to eventually return. John's determination remains unwavering as he embarks on a ten-year quest to find another medallion, knowing the therns watch his every move. One day, he strikes gold, discovering a medallion at a mining site. His joy is tempered by the realization that the therns have been tracking him all along. John is keenly aware of the dire consequences should any harm befall his earthly body during his interplanetary travels. It's a crucial aspect of his existence that underscores the mausoleum's peculiar design, a structure that only opens from the inside. John's death was carefully orchestrated to facilitate his return to Mars. In his diary, John reveals his intentions to Edgar, urging him to safeguard the mausoleum against the Therns in exchange for the considerable wealth left behind. Edgar, stunned by the revelation, ventures out to the mausoleum and attempts to unlock it using a secret password, Ned, the affectionate name John bestowed upon him as a child. As the mausoleum doors swing open, a thern advances menacingly toward Edgar, having been spying on him, waiting for an opportunity to strike down John. However, just as the thern is about to harm Edgar, an unexpected savior intervenes from behind, incapacitating the intruder. Edgar is astounded to find his uncle standing before him. John Carter seizes the Thern's medallion, revealing that he had never actually discovered one. His death and the elaborate ruse were calculated moves to draw out a Thern and acquire the vital medallion needed for his return. With the medallion now in his possession, John entrusts Edgar with the solemn responsibility of safeguarding the mausoleum from this point forward. John Carter steps inside the mausoleum, lying down on the bed with the medallion in hand. As he chants the incantations that will transport him back to Mars, a sense of anticipation and wonder fills the air. The story ends with John's journey poised to continue, rekindling the timeless mysteries of his Martian odyssey.